Uh, and let me introduce to you. I met her in Bombay. And it was God's great plan for us to meet. I was in a place called uh, Tabor Ashram. How many of you know? In Kalyan. Okay. I was there in the intercession team. <laughs> And she had given a letter to be given to the priest for prayers. And the person who came there was in the chapel and that person heard me praying and that person comes to me and gives that letter that she had written to the priest. That person gives it to me and says, this person is seriously ill, you got to pray for this person. So I said, okay. And I opened the letter and I began to read. Praise God. The names that I had never heard in my life, medical names, were all written there. Praise God. And not one or two, so many. And when I saw the address, she happened to be from my area. So when I went to visit her, I met her not on a bed, not on a chair, but on the floor. Because she could not stand, she could not move. And all that she would do is, you know... With the buttocks, she would push, her, push herself on the floor and she came to meet me. That was the condition. And I began to speak to her the word of God. After three hours when I left, after three hours when I left, she came to the door to leave me. She was walking, she was running, she was completely and the reason why I'm saying this is it's not me but the word that dwells inside of me that gives me the confidence that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far more than all that we can ask think or imagine through the power that is working within us so I'll give you only three minutes, sister. <laughs> Not more than that. Because I mean, she won't leave the bike then. Should I give up? Yes. I love to. I, and another thing I want to tell you about her. Her son. She had a lump on her uh, head, forehead. Yeah. And it was a living retreat. And the son was, I think, 11 years or 12 years old. And we had just finished preaching on the fig tree, how Jesus goes and curses the fig tree. And it was a tea break. He goes to his mama and says, Mama, that lump on your head looks ugly. Let me curse it. Come here, mama. And he cursed that lump and he asked her, close your eyes and let me pray. When she opened her eyes, he said, why don't you go and look at yourself in the mirror? And when she went, she saw the lump had disappeared. This testimony should have been nothing less than 12 years back, but it's so fresh. There are some incidents that have happened in my life I can never forget. Praise God. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. You know what is my testimony? How the word of God set me free. Normally, Hosea 4 6 says, My people are destroyed because they lack my knowledge. And I was lacking this knowledge, the word of God. Actually, I was suffering from 1993 with multiple diseases. That is, every part of my organ was destroyed. Doctor said, you have an incurable disease, which will never be cured. It will harm your liver, kidney and heart. In 1996, it happened that it was my liver biopsy. Then again in 98, again liver biopsy. Then again in 2002, it was my heart. And it went on and on and on. Just one fine day, Brother Johnson came to my house and he taught me the word of God, the gospel of Christ. In Isaiah 53, 5 and 6 says, Jesus endured in a place all the evil consequences that we had by divine justice to our iniquities. Now in chastisement to the transgression that we were, that Jesus endured in our place. And he said, look at that cross and see, Jesus is coming right now. And it was 2004 when brother came and visited me with that letter.
letter which I had sent it to Tabor Ashram, saying that um, to the priest uh, through my friend who went to attend a retreat. And then, as the priest did not take that letter and said, go and give it to any uh, another priest. But my friend was little troubled. And when she saw Brother Johnson there, she ran and she gave that letter to him. And then she went for her retreat. The day when she came home, she told my husband that uh, brother, one brother will come to your house to pray for Anthony. Uh, then uh, my husband told me about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, then a brother came at 10.30 in the night and I was waiting because I was on antibiotics. I had just done my kidney biopsy and I had come from Hinduja hospital. And my reports were delayed and brother said, see, today the Lord, Lord's favor is upon you. And he said, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And I was wondering what he's saying about Holy Spirit. But then I came to know, like, you know, I was very thrilled. Like I said, something good is going to happen. And truly, I believed what he said, every word of Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. He told me the divine exchange that took place on the cross of Calvary. And John 10, 10 says, uh, He has come to give us life and life in abundance. I started believing every promise is what he started speaking. And as I accepted the word of God, the time he left, I was totally, completely healed. And he said, Sister, your kidneys are brand new kidneys, what Jesus did it on the cross. It has taken a divine exchange. And as the divine exchange took place, I started meditating night and day. Even night, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I should not sleep. But confess the word of God in and out, in and out. Though I used to get up from my bed also, I used to keep on confessing. Even in the kitchen or in the bathroom, wherever I used to be, I used to keep on confessing. And as it went on and on, all the reports were changed. Amen. Till today, praise God that no kidney problem, no liver problem, it is only the word of God. And that's why Hosea 4.6 says, my people are destroyed because they lack my knowledge. And this is the word of God that sets us free. Believing that Jesus died our death so that we may have life and have it more abundantly.